Hello, my name is Jeremy, this is Red Means Recording, and I got the idea for doing this video as I was preparing samples to put onto my Novation circuit. Um, I realized that uh, I had a process that I had um, sort of developed. It's nothing new, but I thought I'd share it so that um, anyone that is dealing with a, a sampler that has limited memory can um, maybe use this to get more onto it. For me, when it comes to something like the circuit that has samples, or like the OP-1 that has samples and synthesis, the samples are going to be the lifeblood of the track. Um, the For me, like that's what I always start with, that's what sort of defines the beat for me, and then the synths are usually sort of like uh, support for that. So samples are really, really important, and I like to put as many different kinds onto the circuit or onto the OP-1 as possible, so that I always have something to inspire me when I'm making music. So this is Novation Components, it's the online com uh, version of Components, there's a standalone version as well. This is a librarian tool and editor for many of the products that Novation um, has, and uh, it's very awesome, very great resource to do things with. Um, words are fun. So I'm going to load this up, and I'm going to go to the samples section, and I'm going to clear the grid and start with an empty thing. I wanted to make samples from this uh, Dream Trap pack here, because it's got some really nice stuff. But you'll see that if I just drag these over into the circuit thing, we're going to start loading up our sample memory real fast because these are long. And look, I basically have no more room for anything. So that's no good, right? That's no good. Um, and so here's what I do. Um, I reveal these in Finder or Explore, depending on what you're doing. You can right click and do that. Here are the samples. Now I'm going to open my audio editor, which is Audition. And I'm going to open one of these samples into Audition and do a little macro. So here's our sample. And unfortunately, my ASIO drivers are causing some little, some staticky sounds, so please try to ignore those. Um, so what I want to do is record a macro. I've already actually recorded this macro, but I'm going to do it again. Um, if you have a, an audio editor that supports macro processing or batch processing, um, this is how I would do it. So I'm going to go up to Favorites in Audition. I'm going to say Start Recording Favorite. I'm going to go to Effects, I'm going to go to Time and Pitch, and I'm going to go to Stretch and Pitch. Now, what I want to do is stretch this sample to be smaller in a uh, certain amount. So I want to uh, make it shorter, but I want to pitch it up. Um, because when I get it into the circuit, I'm just going to pitch it back down, and I'm going to get it back to a simulacrum of its original pitch and, and timing. So for these super long samples, look, I mean, we're talking about like 10, 12 seconds here. I've chosen to make it 25% of its original value, and um, I'm doing a lock, stretch, and pitch. So this is what it sounds like. So much faster, much higher pitch. Um, depending on your sample, you know, you could go for 50. Just whatever, whatever works for you. But basically the idea is that you're making it shorter and you're pitching it up. And because we're using a uh, value that's like 25 or 50, you can see that the pitch shift here is 24 subtones. So that's two octaves. Um, we know exactly what our pitch uh, thing that we're gonna have to do when we get it back into the sampler is gonna be. So I'm gonna hit apply. I'm gonna go to favorite. I'm gonna say stop recording favorite. I'm gonna give this a name that's verbose. So I'll call this 25% stretch, which is what I actually, already named the thing. I hit OK and now it's saved to my favorites. So um, then I'm going to go into my batch process. If you don't have this, you go to Window, Batch Process. Obviously, if you're using a different DAW, it's going to look different to you. I'm going to go into the original samples here. I'm going to drag them all in and I'm going to select my 25% stretch favorite. I'm going to go to Export Settings and make sure that all of this is fine. Um, if I was going to the OP-1, I would change the samples here to 44.1. Uh, mono, 16, and um, to AIFF, and then um, it would be ready for the OP-1. So even if you're just like, even if you're not stretching stuff, um, a batch process is a great way to prepare stuff for the OP-1, which only uses 44 100 hertz mono 16-bit AIFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFF
these samples uh, stretched to 25% of their original timing value. And um, I'll just show you, like if Nightshade A1 uh, was 12 seconds before, now uh, it is three seconds. So now I can fit all of these into a thing here. So now I have, um, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, sixteen, uh, sixteen, what you call it, sixteen chords I can use in my thing. So that's great. Uh, I'll show you what happens when I get them into the circuit later. So I've already done this to the guitars and the basses. I'm going to go ahead and do basses next. I want this one, this one. <laughs> So believe it or not, those are bass sounds. Okay, um, so what else could I do with this? Well, I actually went and get the guitars too, and they're really long. So if I put these guitars, even though they're like super sped up, um, I'm gonna lose all the rest of my sample memory. So when I'm um, doing stuff like this for the circuit, um, I keep an eye on here, and like when I start to get to like up here, and I've only put like you know chords and melodic things in, it's time to start putting some drums in. So I actually have some drums. So drums I shouldn't need to stretch, but in live, if you're running out of space, um, live actually makes a great sample auditioner as well. So you can uh, go up to here and choose uh, some different menu options. I have size listed there, so I'm going to go from lowest size to highest size. I'm going to go up to here into my circuit top row, add a bunch of kicks. Well, I hate to have missing memory. I hate to have missing slots, but uh, that's where we are right now. So I'm going to now um, save this. I'm going to save as Dream Trap. And then uh, we can go over to the circuit and take a look at uh, what this sounds like um, in context and what we have to do to get this now to work with uh, the, the pitch stuff that we've done. I guess I'll see you over there. Here is the Novation circuit. Anyways, uh, I have been messing around with this a little bit since I just got it back after a long time away. I'll be doing more with this at some point, but I'm um, just sort of getting to know it again. So as we talked about in the previous uh, section, we have prepared a sample set for this that we want to get onto it. Um, I want to back up this stuff here. So I'm going to go over to Novation Components. If you want to connect something to a computer, you got to plug it in. I wish I had thought of this earlier, but I am an idiot. Okay, so uh, <laughs> the circuit's finally connected. Um, anyways, okay, so let's go over um, to backup circuit because we want to back up what I have. I may be doing more with it. I don't know. You never know. All right, cool. Well, you can tell that uh, I backed it up because I now have these two sessions. Here's my old samples. So let us save this. Save as sad in progress. I love that this stuff is in the cloud, but you can also back it up to your local machine if you uh, if you do so want to. We're going to go to samples. We're going to uh, load from pack for our samples. And where is the thing I just made? Dream Trap. And we should see exactly what we saw over on the other side. Wonderful. So send these samples to the circuit. Send the samples, baby. There we go. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off the circuit. I'm gonna turn it back on. I'm gonna get rid of this unsightly, aesthetic destroying USB cable. So let's go over to our drums. Those are blank sample slots. I don't know why they make a click. It's a little weird. Um, okay. So remember that we sped all of this stuff up by uh, 24 semitones or two octaves. So uh, in the circuit, these are your pitch controls. We're gonna turn these all the way down. Those are some of our chords. And there's our bass stuff. Now you can hear there's a sort of grittiness to this. This is something that people who sample have been doing forever. This is not a new technique at all. And uh, it's usually to, to get around the limited memory of a sampler. But what people found is because, um, especially the older samples that didn't have like high quality uh, DACs or high quality um, bit rates or something like that, you get this sort of grittiness to it. Which has become a very 
signature sound in a lot of uh, in a lot of sample based music. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and see what we can do with this real quick. Yeah, it's pretty fun when you get the right samples dialed in. Uh, so yeah, that's my little walkthrough of um, how you can speed up samples and get more onto samplers with limited memory and uh, what you do with them once you get in here. Hopefully it's mostly just have fun and see what you can get out of that. Um, so I used four of my chord samples there. I still have 12 left to use. Uh, that's pretty cool. My name's Jeremy, this is Red Me's Recording. Uh, thanks for hanging out and I hope you have a wonderful day.